Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be testing two budget ESCs, some of the well-known budget ESCs on the market, which is the iFlight Sucks XE 45 amp versus the Mamba F50, not the Pro, just the F50. Both of them run D-Shot 600 and they both have the same FETs on board. However, they perform dramatically different. So what we're going to be doing on these two is we're going to test the noise at each throttle level because that makes a difference. I'll explain what it means in a bit. And also we're going to do a simulated aggressive flight maneuver, which never really happens in real life. It's too aggressive and uh, we're going to see how well they handle. Now, some ESCs don't handle. They actually blow up on the bench and we're going to see if any of these blew up or handled just fine. So with that being said, everything is linked down below and also the timestamps are down below and also the video progress bar. So let's get started. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and get started with our first testing setup, which is just testing the noise at each throttle level, and let's make more sense of this. What you need to look out for? Well, what you always want to see is this to be as flat as possible, and why is that? Well, this is actually the voltage that's coming into your quadcopter from the battery after the motors are being on, and this is what is noise. This is actually the voltage fluctuating up and down, thus it's called noise. So you always want to make sure this is as thin as possible compared to others. For Now we'll make a little bit more sense of this. So here what we have is this is the 10% throttle reading so this is the motors were at 10% throttle what was going on with the main battery voltage here's 25 and here's 50 here's 75 and here's 100 throttle 100% 100 throttle right there and same thing goes for this one this is without the low ESR capacitor the bottom ones are with the same exact low ESR capacitor added which we'll get into in a bit here what you want to look for is you want this to be as thin as possible so we take a look at this number right here which says peak to peak 8.4 volts and on the iFlight it says peak to peak 11.4 volts what that means is the voltage fluctuation but from 16.8 so for example this is 8.4 we just divide that by 2 basically so it means it was fluctuating 4 volts up and 4 volts down so peak to peak is 8.4 volts so you always want this to be you know the smaller the number this is the flatter you're going to get a line here so you always want to make sure this is the smaller number which means it's the best it's it's better overall here we have our maximum voltage spike and here is we have our minimum voltage drop again you want the voltage drop to be as high as possible not as low as possible and you want the voltage spike to be as low as possible you don't want this spiking up to 30 volts and you don't want the voltage drop to drop below 8 volts or, or 5 volts. That's really bad. And there's some ESCs that do that here. Now, before we continue, the Mumba is by far one of the best ESCs I've tested recently. Um, this is Tico 32 status, if you remember my channel from back in the day, which is insane. Literally insane for the price you're paying. Even though they're both using the same FETs, the Mumba here is the absolute beast. No doubt about it. Now, let's go ahead and continue here. So here we see obviously that the line is much thicker on the iFlight with no capacitor and it's peak to peak is 11.4 volts. So we can see that it had a higher voltage spike, which is something you don't want. See, this is 20.4 and this one is 22. So we, we have a higher voltage spike here, which is not good. So this is, we'll say 22 volts right here and our voltage drop, which is well, it was probably this one right here, but we'll just simulate this one right here. The lowest it got was 10.6 volts and don't forget this is 16.8 volts right here. So you can see the difference here. We never want this to go uh, below 10 volts. That's that's not good if it does that actually, especially with the new DJI stuff. Uh, here we see that we had the minimum was 12 volts. So the drop was higher, which is better. So we're still closer to 16.8 volts. And again, this is also 16.8 volts. And then we had a 20 0.4 voltage spikes and again the mumba is much better than the iFlight, like much better in my opinion now uh this is the stuff that usually gets in your video feed especially when you're going down your video transmitter this is the noise that you see here and once we jump into the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers you'll get to see what i mean in a bit here now let's go ahead and take a look at the ones with the low ESR capacitor installed. Let's see the difference it makes so now on the bottom here they both have the same exact rubicon 50 volt 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor. Now let's take a look at the peak to peak volt on the Mumba. So it used to be 8.4 volts. Now it's 6.4 volts. You can see even the line much thinner. That's why you always need to add the low ESR capacitor. Look at the difference it makes. It's huge and you could even hear it, which is crazy. And if we take a look at the iFlight, it was 11.4 volts. Look at that. That's about a 50% increase in performance or 50% decrease in noise, we could say. 6 0.8 volts. However, the Mamba is still beating by 0.2 volts and it still sounded much smoother when I was testing. So the overall winner here, without a doubt, at least on the throttle noise level test, is the Mamba. 100%. 
But you see the difference also at the same time what a low ESR capacitor can do to the overall system and why it's always recommended to add it. It could be the difference between your ESC blowing a FET and not blowing a FET. So yeah, always add that low ESR capacitor. So I really hope that made sense in terms of this kind of noise testing. Usually 75% throttle is the most noisy on every ESC. So now let's go ahead and jump into the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers and uh, see the results there. All right, guys, so now we're looking at the simulated aggressive flight maneuver. So this is a really aggressive flight here that's going to take place. And this is what you could expect. We actually see a higher peak to peak than the previous uh, throttle noise level test. But that's a good baseline just to get an idea. And here's also another higher peak to peak because this is very rough and this is simulating worst case scenario. So let's go ahead and make sense of this again. So we said we always want to look for the lowest peak to peak. And as you can tell, the Mamba is 12.4 volts and the iFlight is 16.6. So the Mamba here is definitely much, much better. And you can see that the line is much thinner than this line right here. So that's something to always look out for. Now on voltage spikes here, we got 21 0.6 volts right there and voltage drop we got a 9.2 volt and here look at this on the mom but this is this is pretty bad actually so the voltage drop was 7.4 volts and the voltage spike was 24 volts the voltage spike is reasonably acceptable here but the voltage drop is definitely not acceptable um, it won't cause a blackout, but you might have some weird issues going on at times. And this stuff sometimes at a specific frequency can make its way down to your gyro. So this is where this stuff is won't be tunable, basically, if you have a really noisy uh, ESC here. So again, the Mumba is definitely the winner. So now let's go ahead and take a look at both of these tests with the capacitors installed. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so we have the capacitor for the Mumba, and we have the same exact capacitor for the iFlight, which is the Rubicon 50 volt, 30, 470 microfarad. So we'll just say 470 UF. So let's make sense of this. Let's see the amount of difference it made. Now on the Mumbo with no capacitor, we had a peak to peak voltage or amplitude of 12.4 volts. Now with the capacitor, it went down to eight volt. That's crazy. You can see the line also much, much, much thinner, which is something you always want to look out for here. So this is a freaking amazing result. By the way, no, no other ESC is about to beat this. If they would, it's like by 5%. So this is an, it's a steal basically. This is an absolute winner. Uh, in my book, no doubt about it. And here we have the iFlight with the capacitor installed. We can see that it dropped to 9.4 volts from 16.6 volts. Look how big that was. Look at, look at these voltage drops and voltage spikes here. And look how the capacitor has transformed it. However, this is not the only thing. So we said here was 9.4 volts and we said here the amplitude was 8.8 .8 volts. So there isn't really that much of a difference. What is that about point? six of a volt here so 0.6 of a volt difference but with that 0.6 i could totally see what's going on and what do i mean by that well look i could easily read this one we can see full throttle here we can say 50 percent. we can see it stopped so it spiked up and then i can see probably another 100 another 50 and we could probably see this is another stop here and this was like a start stop here of something but i could easily read this now here it's also the same thing but you can tell right there, that's a little bit difficult to read. And um, it's not really a big deal, but the obvious winner here is what I'm trying to tell you is the Mumba. This is still pretty good, but this is not really acceptable if you're not losing, if not, if you're not using the low ESR capacitor. So, and again, filtration is key and that is the difference it actually makes here. And it's very important to keep an eye on the, uh, the, the, the filtration on the board here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want me to change the format slightly, let me know down in the comment section. Also, I really hope this gets views. So I keep doing this because I do enjoy doing this, but it just never really got views before so yeah everything's linked down below go buy the mumba it's really good i've been using it also for a while now and that's the reason why i wanted to test it again and i wanted to compare it next to the iFlight because these are the two big you know name brand budget escs out there tomorrow i'll have the hyphon rc compared against these two and we'll see how well that performs and again both of these are using the same exact fets just the overall design is different and um, they're both dsha 600 so and again mumba is a beast and well everything's linked down below i'll see you guys in the next one peace